This week, we're moving even closer to the present with two contemporary thinkers, Judith Butler and Slavoj Žižek, who are both very active and uh, in uh, some respects, I suppose, in the prime of their careers. And uh, it is a, a time for uh, thinking about the status of a critique uh, today, uh, as Judith Butler has sometimes put it, uh, as uh, Zizek has talked about it, it's really the, the status of a philosophy, and uh, in his case also of, of uh, psychoanalysis. We're going to focus on their texts, as we do uh, every week, uh, and uh, see how they relate to these questions of anti-foundationalism and the uh, status um, of uh, the subject and of thinking uh, in uh, the contemporary world. With Butler, we begin with a consideration of her um, work uh, on gender. She's a prolific author. Both of these authors are prolific, and, and we really, as I've said, I guess, throughout the semester since we started way back with Kant, we're just scratching the surface of uh, their uh, productivity, of their uh, intellectual contributions. Uh, uh, Judith Butler started her career, uh, as I did, really, with the work on French Hegelianism and her uh, her, 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 her dissertation in her first book had to do with the, um, the status of Hegel in uh, modern France. Uh, and uh, I actually met her because of our common research interests uh, way back when and, uh, and have followed her, I followed her work with great interest uh, ever since. I received a Fulbright um, to study in Heidelberg. And I studied with Gadamer and I took a series of courses on Hegel there. And the concept of desire was extremely important to me, the interplay between desire and recognition, which is so central to Hegel's phenomenology. Um, it seemed to be a point of departure both for my philosophical interests and for my interest in feminism and yeah, gender. Right. Uh, and maybe, maybe that's all I really do, is think about desire and recognition, I think, yes. probably. Uh, she moved on to uh, work on gender uh, and um, sexuality in, in a book called Gender Trouble, which um, really uh, was a game changer uh, in the field of women's studies, uh, gay and lesbian studies, and uh, queer studies, as it came to be called uh, uh, later. Uh, Gender Trouble uh, was uh, so surprising and so uh, provocative because it brought together uh, gender theory and performativity, or, or theories of performance, uh, arguing that uh, uh, not only was gender not an essential category, so she was anti-essentialist and anti-foundationalist, but uh, that gender uh, had everything to do with performance and with improvisation, as she'll come to call it later on. Um, and in a series of books since then, um, uh, Judith Butler has been working out the ramifications of taking performance seriously while at the same time paying attention to the ways in which identity, uh, sexuality, um, and uh, politics uh, intersect in the uh, contemporary world. I think for me, uh, gender trouble was, uh, well, it emerged from my activism. Some people mm -hmm. said, well, you're such a feminist, why don't you do feminist scholarship? I thought, oh, no, I don't want to do feminist scholarship. <laughs> I just want to read my continental philosophy over here yes. and then have my feminist activism over there. But then I was invited to work on Beauvoir and Vitigue, and that involved me in um, a kind of critique of dominant forms of feminism at the time that seemed to assume that uh, women, um, that to be recognized as a woman, you had to be. Uh, you had to be within a certain kind of heterosexual frame or you had to have a particular mm -hmm. relationship to the maternal. And I fought against that. Yep. And I, I wanted to open up the category and I wanted to say that the category either misrecognizes certain people right. or fails to recognize them altogether. Right. So maybe opening up the terms of recognition yeah. was, yeah. Um, was, was one aim of gender trouble. Yeah. Uh, the text we, we are uh, focused on this, this week is uh, undoing Gender, which is a, a text from the, from the last uh, uh, decade where she has been reconsidering uh, the, that uh, constellation of issues of gender, sexuality, performance, uh, politics, uh, and uh, ethics. Uh, and in this more recent uh, work, 
uh, uh, with a real focus on um, what the difference that vulnerability makes uh, as we think uh, about identity, uh, uh, responsibility, and performance. The quotation that I uh, start with uh, uh, is uh, uh, from pages 9 and 10. To understand gender as a historical category, she writes, is to accept that gender understood as one way of, cultural configuring, of culturally configuring a body is open to continual remaking, and that anatomy and sex are not without cultural framing. So even anatomy, she puts it in quotes, and sex are culturally framed, that's really important for Judith Butler, that they're not natural, they're not essential, they're not pre-cultural, um, and here's so important, open to continual remaking. And the, the freedom and pleasure is found in this continual remaking. She is very sensitive to the charge that uh, uh, she, she writes as if people can just reinvent themselves willy-nilly or ad hoc. Uh, she's not arguing that at all. She's very much aware of how cultural reframing is also an inhibition on remaking. But she's interested in how inhibition and remaking uh, um, work together or intersect. Uh, and, and that is a, certainly in the Foucauldian tradition, that is how prohibitions how prohibitions um, uh, actually lead to new forms of uh, identity and remaking. So she says that performance, this is very early on on the very first page of the, the text we've assigned, uh, uh, per performance is a kind of doing. Here's just, she writes, if gender is a kind of doing, an incessant activity performed in part without one's knowing and without one's willing it, it is not for that reason automatic or mechanical. Gender is not automatic or mechanical, even though it is um, an activity that happens, if we can say this unconsciously. Gender is a practice of improvisation. This is a very interesting word, uh, improvisation, because when you're improvising uh, on an instrument, it, it, you're, you're often you're not conscious of what you are about to play. That's one of the keys about it in, in improvisation. So. Um, we can put in some cl a clip here uh, uh, about uh, uh, you know playing the piano or something where you're just making up something. You're making up something. You can't say exactly what it's going to be before you do it, but it's certainly not automatic. It's certainly not something that uh, 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 is just mechanical. It's that combination of of uh, unpredictability uh, and possibility. Uh, that uh, uh, Butler is emphasizing here. She, she says there's no easy way to separate the life of gender from the life of desire, so that our, our identity uh, is um, uh, very much affected by um, our passions or our, our desires. This leads her in the text we've assigned to a consideration of agency. Agency is a vexed subject for uh, Judith Butler because uh, she does not want to rely on a concept of the self uh, uh, that uh, sees the self as an author of everything that happens in the world, that sees the self as controlling, as dominating, because that would put her in the, uh, in the, the liberal individualist paradigm that has been criticized by uh, a range of thinkers we've seen it from Horkheimer and Adorno through Foucault, uh, that is the, the criticizing of this notion of the imperial or dominating uh, self. She's interested in agency as a mode of being that is uh, 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 riven with paradox, as she says on page three, um, that is, it is, uh, the, the self is never outside of the cultural uh, influences but is not simply determined by those influences. So as she says, as a result, the I finds itself at once constituted by norms, but endeavors to live in ways that maintain a critical and transformative relation to those norms. So she's, she wants a self or an agent that is not just a victim uh, or an effect of norms, um, but is also not just able to reinvent itself uh, willy-nilly. Um, so gender uh, is important for Butler because uh, uh, of her own political and ethical stances 
uh, uh, which involve her, have involved her in, uh, in feminism and uh, gay and lesbian transgender politics. Um, uh, and, and, and she wants to have a philosophical context for that politics um, that emphasizes a possibility, that emphasizes freedom, uh, but also acknowledges the realities of uh, uh, social norms and of cultural constraints. Uh, uh, she wants a, what she calls an activism without categorization. Activism without categorization. This is from page uh, seven of her text. After all, she says, queer theory and activism acquired political salience by insisting that anti-homophobic activism can be engaged in by anyone, regardless of their sexual orientation, and that identity mar markers are not prerequisites for participation. So she wants to make sure that everyone understands that you don't have to be uh, gay to be in favor of gay liberation. You don't have to be uh, uh, an Arab to be in favor of Arab uh, liberation. You don't have to be a Jew to be in favor of Jewish liberation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that there is a kind of activism that um, comes through identity, uh, but it is not limited to uh, essential identity markers. She wants an activism, in other words, uh, that is not uh, categorized uh, through uh, essential uh, identity markers. Um, but then, if anyone can participate in these different uh, modes of activism, what brings these political movements together? She writes that on page eight, the task of all of these movements seems to me to be about distinguishing among the norms and conventions that permit people to breathe, to desire, to love, uh, and to live. And those norms and conventions that restrict or eviscerate the conditions of life itself. In other words, she thinks what brings these movements together is uh, a politics of possibility that allows people to desire and to live more freely. 